Hello everyone and welcome back to another Lost Dark video. Today we're going to talk about the Maya Berserker. And it's basically like a beginner guide for the Maya Berserker. I'm going to help you how to play it, which stats, spells, tripods, everything. So after you watching this video, you should be able to go in and play full Mayhem Berserker. So the agenda today is we're going to talk about the introduction, which is like more like a general introduction. What is the spell spec about? Why should you play it? Pros and cons, stats, engravings, spells and tripods, rotation and gameplay, runes, gems, cards, and which pet, like which stats of your pets should you actually use. And thank you a lot to Cryo Decry. He, he came on my stream and actually helped me with this build, understanding it and actually like how to play it better. So big shout out to him for helping me. Uh, he's not on any social media, but basically he's on my, on my I'm streaming, he's in my chat. So a big thanks to him for helping me creating this build and understanding it. It basically a build came from him, but I mixed it together with maxroll.gg. They make like really strong builds for all the classes in Lost Ark. So I've taken maxroll's build and I've taken the one cryodacry he recommended, like his own build, and I've like combined them into one strong build, which is like my taste of it so i think you're gonna like it so enjoy the video and uh, again you also have the timelines down in the description so you can like skip to the part you only want to see so good luck so an introduction to the mayhem berserker is basically the whole build is built up on an engraving that you're using it's basically going to change the way you're bursting so normally a berserker would use the birds when they have enough fury they would basically use the burst but instead you basically use your burst without having fury and you just go into this instantly burst mode as you can see in the background my character is like glowing up this is the effect of your instant burst and it's never gonna expire you're basically in a burst mode all the time so it's basically what you can see one of the benefits of this build is you don't need to build feel fury you know to, no need to like attack all the time to get fury and then go into enrage you're basically always in this berserk mode you're also gonna have a permanent buff so this is basically you're always gonna have this on and as you can see in the right side right now you can see it's always giving you um outgoing damage plus four on the level one engraving plus four damage uh, to attack and move speed uh, attack speed and move speed is actually increased by 15 percent and all incoming damage is decreased by 65 percent but you only have 25 percent hp like you're always stuck on 25 percent hp which can be uh, a bit odd for some people and that's also why a lot of people maybe dislike this build but if you can live with it it's actually pretty cool but we're gonna come back to that later so it's basically like a permanent enrage mode instead of you have to like wait till you get into your enrage mode also you get a lot of like bonuses from all those spells saying like if you're under 50 percent health you're gonna get 100 more damage or 12 percent more reduction damage stuff like that so you can really use all those really cool effects like there is some uh, abilities they have where they get deal like more 100 more damage if they're under below 50 percent health which you always are in this build which is insane you also only need to use the 30% healing potions, the green one, in, for example, Guardian Raids. You don't need to use the bigger ones now, because you are never over, like, you know, 25% uh, HP. So the one that heals 30% HP is the only one you need. So it's also really cheap to get potions for the Mayhem Berserker. But basically, that's it. So you basically have a un unlimited Fury mode all the time. You have a very low HP, but also you get 65% um less damage so it's it's pretty much getting into the same but i'm gonna i'm gonna come back to that on how close you're gonna die like how fast and stuff like that i'll come back on that but so that's like this is the mayhem berserker it's a permanent and that's also why it's called mayhem you are always in rage you always get this very cool bonus effect and basically on your level three engravings when you have like enough 50 notes you're basically always going to have 18 percent more damage you're always going to have 15 percent more speed and also attack speed and you're again going to take 65 percent less damage but you have to live with the consequence of always running around with 25 percent hp and also the shields it also says you can only receive 25 percent of the shield effects so really interesting and whenever you leave this burst mode you basically come out of it and getting 25 percent hp back so you're basically going to go from 55 25 sorry to 50. but that is like the you can say the round base about what is the mayhem berserker about but let's get more into the guide now we're going to talk about the pros and cons so basically the pros and cons about this build is it's not compared to other builds it's more like this build like what is what is good to play about this game like this build and what is bad about this build 
So first of all, pros and cons. So pros, we have a really good decent mobility, like decent mobility, you're running like 50% faster all the time. So that's quite good, isn't it? So you're always like faster. You always have a high burst rotation. You're basically always bursting. So that's really cool. Like you always have a like burst, burst, burst. And always in burst mode, which means like if you play, if you don't play Mayhem Berserker and you play regular Berserker, like uh, Berserker's technique, then you have to look at your fury all the time and you have to like, always plan whenever you're gonna go into fury mode sorry berserker mode or you know yeah berserker mode basically we can call it that and sometimes you're gonna use it and the boss is gonna toast you around and you're gonna waste it so basically in this build mode here this build you're always in burst mode which means you're always ready to bursting it's also really good at countering and it also has like extreme high stagger so you're really gonna help out with stagger damage the consequences of this is you need really to think about you always have 25 percent hp in this build Again, remember that we're getting less damage, we're 65% less damage. So keep in mind, it's not that bad, but you just have to live with looking at your HP and it always has 25%. And some people, they don't like it, they dislike it, and they're just not going to play this build because they can't live with seeing that you always are stuck on 25% HP. Some people, they get, you know, anxiety, you know, they really feel like, like some people, they just can't live with always being low on HP because they feel like they have to use a healing potion all the time. So that's a thing you really have to get used to. I think that's one of the hardest, hardest things. There's less room for errors. So basically, you, because of the low HP also, it's like it's also important you know, that you don't get like uh, hit by very, very strong spells. So it's like important that you also like dodge and stuff like that. You don't have like, you know, 100 HP. But again, I have a lot of things I'm going to go through this in this guy, which is going to make you more tanky. So don't worry about that. Also, you have long skill cast times. So again, some of your skills, you know, require charging up and stuff like that. It's not only instant casting spells. So, you know, you, you have some casting times. And before this build is working at all, you actually need engravings. So it's very important you have actually class engravings. And that's also what you can say one of the consequences that you need to use class engravings on your engravings. So talking about stats, there's like two different builds for this, like there's like two different stats set up for the Mayhem Berserker. You basically have the first setup where you're going to go all in on crit. Get as much crit as possible. But the second stat you want is swiftness. So basically crit as much crit as possible. Just get in all, all the crit as you can do because it's just going to give you more crit rate. And it's comparing like it's got, because normally in burst mode, it's going to give you crit uh, more crit. But sadly, it's not going to give crit in mayhem. It's removing that. It's one of like the, this, like this downtage of not having, you know, the normal Berserker technique. So basically this one, you want to have as much crit as possible because your, your auto attack in this burst mode is really, really strong. And trust me, more crit in this build is just like life saving. So you just want as possible, as much, much crit as possible. And then the second one, you always want to have like a, a lot of swiftness. But of course, crit is your highest priority. But swiftness is second one. It's going to increase your attack speed, move speed, and also skill cooldown is, is going to be like um cooldown on your skills is going to be decreased. And some people, they also run a build where they go like 50-50, so they're going to run, run 50 crit and 50 swiftness, you know, like half swiftness and half crit. You can also do that. That's also totally fine. But, you know, some prepare the crit build and some prepare, you know, the 50-50 with crit and swiftness. I'm probably a split between crit, uh, like a 50-50. I think I'm more like on the 50-50 side, but I'm probably going to go more in on just like focus on getting a lot of crit because trust me, you are going to see insane numbers when you go with the crit build because you will just crit all the time and your burst is going to be amazing. So talking about engravings, what engravings do you need for playing the mayhem? And of course, when you go to the engravings, we can see it's very like super important. You of course have mayhem because without mayhem, you're not going to work. You basically need level one mayhem for actually being able to like go in and out of mayhem all the time and as you can see here like my character right now is inside mayhem but when you press x you're going to leave it again and when you're going to press set you're going to go into mayhem again you can just basically go in and out in and out but every time you go out it's like you, you have to like wait 30 seconds before you can go in again you can see down here is like steaming off and then i can get in again but the cool thing like mayhem again it's gonna like i have level three um and the thing with Mayhem is that it's going to increase again on level 3 in this case. It's going to increase my damage attack power. 
my outgoing damage by 18%, my attack power, uh, sorry, and my attack speed and movement speed by 15%. It's going to uh, decrease the damage I take by 65%, and it's going to always do so. You always down on 25%. So you can see now here, I'm going to use my set, and boom, now I'm in mayhem, and I'm stuck on 25% HP. But it's so, it's so cool. And again, then you also all the. Uh, but you're also only gonna get like 25% of the of the shields. Here it says um, healing is applied. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, uh, healing is applied. Can only receive 25% of shield effects. There you go. So that's also like one of the like downsides of it. But still, the 65% da damage dec dec decrease is insane. Like, look at this. Like, if I go into my gear details. Um, I'm gonna go down to defense. You can see right now I have an 84% less damage reduction. That is insane. Like, imagine a boss attacks me for 1,000, but I'm on, I'm only gonna get like 84, like sorry, 48, sorry, 48% of the damage I'm only gonna get on me. That is insane. And if I go out of my burst mode, you can see it's always always like it's go all the way down to 56. So the burst mode damage reduction is insane. So don't really worry about, you know, having only 25% health because the damage reduction you get is so low. So you're not really getting much damage. Uh, you just like have to look at that little life bar all the time and make sure that you're not going to go down on zero. Because you see a lot of Mayhem Berserkers playing Guardian Raids and a lot of them, they die often because they don't really maybe spec right or stuff like that. So again, the most important engraving you need is mayhem, and I recommend like getting up to level three. So you know, try to get um, try to get it up to level like um, upgrade all the way up to level two. So it actually gives like six points. You can see you have it here. So it gives like six points, and after that you will just need like to get a lot of all your jewel jewelries. So you can see all my jewelries here have plus two in mayhem. So like plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two and that means a level a blue one mayhem here plus. All my equipment has level two, like two mayhems in them. You can basically fill on it on the auction house. Then you're gonna get a full mayhem one. You can see I actually have one too many, so I could basically go with one of the like one of the jewels only have like like one plus in it. So that's the thing. The next one you're gonna go for is there's two different ones. You either wanna go for the one called Fortitude, or you wanna go with the one called Master's Tenacity. Master's Tennessee is probably the most like famous one. Uh, I'm just gonna go try find it down here. Master's Tennessee. This is probably the most popular one after Mayhem, um, because it's gonna increase your outgoing damage whenever you are lo below fifty percent health. And da, uh, you can see we are always under fifty percent health, so we always gonna get this bonus. So basically, if you have it on level three, you're gonna increase your damage by sixteen percent. And Mayhem is already increasing your damage by eighteen percent if you have a level of three. So you can imagine this one plus Mayhem, you're gonna have so much damage out all the time. It's amazing. But you can even go with this one here and be a, like a very, very high damage dealer. But if you want to be kind of a bit more tanky, like you really want to be the guy who can take a lot of damage and really save your team and, you know, be... I mean, there's two ways you can carry people. You can even carry people by being able to take a lot of damage and really strong life. Or you can even be the guy who deals a lot of damage and basically kills the boss faster. So, again, this is a controversial thing. You can either go with Master Tennessee as your number two, or you can do the one that I'm having really fun with at the moment is um, I'm having fun with Fortitude. So Fortitude is, is what well, you can see incoming damage is reduced by proportional to HP lost max 30%. It's basically giving you up to 30% less damage, the more damage, the more lower health you have. So this one is increasing my damage reduction by insane amount. Can you see this? Like imagine this. My Berserk mode is already decreasing my damage I get by 65, sorry, 50, you know, 65%. And then this one here can decrease my damage all the way up to 30%. That's 95 damage reduction together. That's insane. That means you're only going to get 5% of the damage that you're supposed to get. And I'm not even done because I'm going to show you even more stuff that can decrease the damage you're going to get even more. It's insane. This is so good. So fortitude here. If you have this one, you have your mayhem, it's so freaking much damage reduction. You will not be able to be killed. Like, trust me, you will be a god. You'll 
just ignore all the damage you're going to get. You still have to sometimes use healing potions, but you are going to be a god like. This is probably going to get nerfed soon, probably. So play this build and have fun with it until they're going to nerf it because you are going to be able to take so freaking much damage. And gun lances, they can go back in the queue as a tanks because this is way more damage reduction. So now we're going to talk about which spells we're going to use and also kind of like which tripods we're going to use. First time we're going to talk about uh, the first spell is Shoulder Charge. You basically only want to level this one up to level 4 because the only thing we need... Uh, currently I'm talking when we only have 264 points. Of course when you're higher up it will look different but I'm going to talk as a new level 50. I mean it's like a kind of like a beginner guide this, this guide here. So of course when you get up higher you would need better and you can of course upgrade your other spells higher but we're going to talk as a standard point like if you have 264 or actually 252 also like 252 is fine this build only requires 252 for actually being run and of course in a high-end game it will look different then you can upgrade some of your spells to higher level and so on but again we're going to charge start with shoulder charge you want to get it up to level four and you want to get excellent mobility which is going to increase this the charge distance by two meter I have removed cooldowns in this training phase, so I can show you the spells all the time. So basically, I've removed cooldowns. So keep in mind, the spells have cooldowns, but in this training mode, I'm using no cooldowns. So I can show you the spell like this. So basically, this spell is being used as either a, a dex, a, an extra dodge, so you like get away, or you're going to use it for like getting close to the boss. For example, you can see here, if that was a boss, I can get close to it. But I can also dodge away. And again, it has a cooldown, it's just like this test mode. So you have your normal dodge spell to like get away or get close, but you also have your dodge, so you have the shoulder charge. So basically you can see here like if this boss is like attacking you, you can like, oh dodge, shoulder charge. So you can like get away. You can also like use a uh, dodge to get closer to him and then shoulder charge. It's, it's like giving you an additional dodge and I always prefer to have it on Q. So like very fast I can get away or get to the boss. So highly recommend it. Then we have Chain Sword, which is also a really great spell. Uh, Chainsword is basically going to be your damage buff. Uh, it is here. You only, only also again want to have it up to level 4. Because then you get this bonus here. Which is saying on hit crit. Uh, where you basically got to get 15% more crit for 15 seconds. So basically this spell here is also your counter spell. Very important. So when you know when the boss is getting into his, the mode where you can actually counter him. And you know basically like stop him. And counter him like when he charges and you counter and then he like oh shit get started like a monster hunter this is your counter spell so it's a counter spell plus it gives you crit so whenever you use it on your mob here you can see you're gonna get like 50% uh, more crit for three seconds so it's really great to use before you know some kind of a, like burst spell uh, by the way uh, of course in this build here you all, always want to be in mayhem mode so of course you want to press set and be in this like circle mode here uh, that's like the main objective with this this build but yeah, again, you want to use your uh, this chain sword for getting your like crit buff, but also most importantly, it's gonna be a counter attack. So that's gonna be your counter attack. So if the boss charged you, you could use it and counter him, and boom, you know, stop him. Secondly, like sorry, thirdly, we have red dust, which is a really, really, really strong spell, but it's also gonna help you in other ways. It's gonna actually be again also your buffer. So basically, um, your Chainsword here is a buffer. It gives you three seconds of more crit, but actually Red Dust is also giving you six seconds more of crit. So it works really great. You can see they actually stack together. So when you use them right after each other, you get like three percent, no, fifteen percent more, and twenty percent more. It's a, uh, it's great. And again, more crit rate and more crit rate. But we're gonna go into a look at here. So we have the, the Red Dust one here. And red dust, you want to go up in quick prep. So basically, got to reduce the cooldown by three seconds. We're gonna have vital points. So basically, here you can see vital point hit. And we're gonna have red wave. Uh, well, okay. So I can go through. Quick prep is giving, reducing the, the cooldown by three seconds. Vital point hit is gonna give you the twenty percent more uh, crit, which is really really great because we like crit in this build. Then you have the red wave, which is the rising slash shoots the red spirit sword along the ground, damaging. Um, 125% more and an attack range of 25%. So you, you like this one. This is like really increasing the damage by a lot and also the attack range. This is basically like a spell you can use a bit away from the boss, which is it's pretty cool. Like you can see, like I can stand probably like here. Yeah, I can even stand 
more far away. So it's a, it's a great one that if you need to at least stay a bit up by, away from the boss. But again, it's great. This spell here is really, really strong with bleed. So you really want to use bleed on this one because it has a very, very low uh, cooldown. Well, I mean, low and low, but it, it's 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 actually 30 seconds. But still, you really want to use like uh, red dust uh, on bleed. That's like a really, really great uh, combination together with these two. Fourthly, we have Strike Wave, which is insane strong. Like Strike Wave, you have to like hold it down to two levels and then it's going to be used. And you can see down, it's going to like deal so much damage. For your Strike Wave, uh, here we have Strike Wave here. You want to get it up to level 10 and the same with Red Dust, up to level 10. And you're basically going to go Wave, where it's going to outgoing damage increase by 10%. You also want to go to limit break, charge level plus one, time to reach charge level uh, two, uh, minus one, uh, 0 0.0 seconds, and overcharge damage. So basically, the overcharge is going to give you 40% more damage. And that is basically the, the you know, the, like the extra one you can like charge it. So you can like charge it twice to deal even more damage. And then we're going to go with uh, Earth Flip, which is this one here. Uh, element is now Earth. The Spirit Swords flip the ground and tra travels slowly, attacking up to four times and inflicting up to 100% more damage. This is insane because it's basically like you can see it's got it. It's like attacking boom, 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 boom. It's basically damaging four times the boss, especially when they're big. It's going to damage them four times times where you can see blaze wave is not going to attack them like four times but you know what i mean so it's like it, it's a really great one with two charges 40 percent more damage and then like four damage boom 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 so really really strong and it's like insane for like you know like a yeah, single target then we have our really good spell here called finish strike which is also a really strong one in your rotation uh, we're gonna find it up here in the top. So finish strike here. It's basically like you can hold it down. So it like it's like attacking dub double on. So it's like you can see you have to like hold it down or actually sit and press it. Like sit and press it all the time because it has like it's like a combo one. It's like it has like two moves. Look, like hash slash like hack slash. It's a strong one. It's a really strong spell. Uh, first of all, we're gonna use tenacity on skill use grant push immunity. So basically, you're gonna get immune for pushing. You also want to use weak point detection. So damage to push immune foes is plus 40. So basically big bosses is going to get minus 40%, uh, oh, sorry, plus 40% more damage on bosses. And then lights out. Change to combo mode. The end attack inflicts 150% more damage at the cooldown plus 6. So that's of course a minus. And of course this is making the spell into a combo spell. So you can actually use it like a... Uh, twice so without this of course if i changed it then of course we, it wouldn't be a combo one it would just be a normal one but we wanted to be the combo one here so it's it's really really strong and also you want it on level 10 so strong spell and it's it's dealing great damage so the next one we're going to use is timber slash so timber slash is a really great combo spell where you can also like hold it down and it's basically like you're actually toasting your enemies up the air and like damaging them and like boom it has like you can see you're like one, two, three attacks in a row. Uh, of course, on bosses, you're not going to toast them up. But it's a great one because you're also traveling four meters with this spell. So it's like a great mobility spell also. Uh, the tripods we're going to use is you basically only want to get this one up to level four. Like that's the only thing you need. And then you want to get quick uh, prep. It's basically reducing the cooldown by five seconds. But again, with the skill points we only have right now, this is the one that you want to like only get on four and then have the quick uh, prep. If you have more skill points than I have, uh, then Timber Slash is the first one you're going to get up to 10 after the ones I'm already going to show you. Because this is going to put give you, uh, use all your 252, which is like the standard one. And then this one is the first one you want to go up in 10 when you get actually more skill points than the normal ones. So, but great spell. Um, yeah. Then we're going to have... Hellblade, which is a really strong mobility spell, and it's so strong with Mayhem build because we are down on 25% health. So basically, Mayhem is a spell where you're like charging it and you're basically like damaging everyone around you, and it's also gonna like you have to like hold to the correct trigger point. But I'm gonna show you the tripods first to make sense of this spell. So first of all, we're gonna go with leap. So basically, this is changing the spell. Instead of a spell you're using where you are right now, it's gonna leap up to eight meters of where you have your mouse located. Um, it's really strong. 
then we're gonna go with deadly blow which if you have well when your hp is below 50 percent health like you always have in mayhem you're gonna deal 80 percent more damage which is insane and then we're gonna use earth flip which is now changing the element to earth after the finishing blow trust your sword deeper into the ground and inflicting 80 percent basic skill damage strong one so let me show you here so i can stand over from here and use it over here and it's basically gonna jump over there and we have to you know release the mouse when we get exactly to that trigger point as you can see here like this and release it now boom and it gets this like earth explosion this spell is actually great at both like getting close to your and like to your boss and dealing damage um but it's also a lifesaver if you need for some reason to get away uh, again and this is why we have like really good mobility because we basically have our dodge we basically have our shoulder charge we basically have our uh, this one called the timber slash where you can also like get away um we also have then our basically our hellblade so like to get away so great mobility and again this spell here is dealing so much damage like so much damage the last one we're going to talk about is sword stall and this one is the one where people they get like crazy high crit numbers um for sword storm we are going to again go up to level 10 here you can see here like 10 10 10 4 10 uh this one should be 4 4 10 but again you can see when i explain the tripods you can see like what level they are in so for sword storm you want to go with quick prep basically reducing three seconds of cooldown you want to go with weak point detection so it needs 40 percent more to bosses or pushy moon foes and you want to go flame storm so again flame storm is amazing element is now fire on hurt on hit burn foes inflicting 4000 damage every six second yeah every every oh sorry every second for six seconds you're gonna deal five four thousand damage and when your hp is 50 or lower it's gonna increase the damage by 100 percent so again we have now two spells which deals more damage when you have lower hp so again when i'm gonna use this one it's gonna give 100 percent more damage when i'm below and again because mayhem we are always on 25 percent hp so you basically just use the spell as boom boom and there you go and it just created 121k let's try again 121 like that is extreme damage like extreme i've heard people having like million damage or seven hundred thousand. like it's insane how much damage you can deal with this one but it's a great one of course they want it, it didn't crit there but that's why you want to crit that's why you want to crit because then you got to crit like 421 120k and keep in mind my gear score is only 526 of this character so that's why i'm not you know having like probably high number as you the last spell we're going to talk about is, of course, when you're in your mayhem mode, you have an additional spell called Dark Rush, which is basically like a really, really strong stagger spell. And it's also making you push immunity and it's a, like it's a back attack. So it's actually dealing more damage from like it has successfully back and back attacks. And you can like, get engravings where your back attacks deals more damage, for example. So basically, this is a spell where you just like really go crazy and attack really hard. And it's again, it's in your rotation, so you should also remember to use this one here as you're like a little bursting spell. So, super strong spell. Uh, about your, uh, you can say your um, ultimate or your uh, awakening spell, I will kind of let it up to you. I have seen a lot of people that are actually running with Berserker's Fury for um, what is called for uh, awake, uh, Mayhem Berserk, because you have Eva Chains of Vengeance, which is basically like an explosion where you deal insane amount of damage like you saw there 400k crit but you could also run with berserker's fury so again more people they prefer running with uh, berserk fury in like mayhem mode again that's just your second awakening spell so you just need to do a quest before you can get it it takes about like i don't know two to five hours but berserk fury is basically a spell you hold down which charges up three times like one two or actually two times and then it's going to release a blast which is insanely strong it's much faster than the other one it's uh, faster faster but it's it's a really strong one uh, especially for like you can see like the single targeting um but that's also one of the spells that people prefer so that is the most easy most used as um as a mayhem berserker but again I, i'm gonna lift i'm gonna uh, like let it up to you if you want to use change of vengeance which also have like a strong burst you can see here the end or you want to use uh, berserk's fury but i'm just going to tell you that most people they use berserk fury for this build here 
It's a strong spell. Both of them are strong. But this one has, again, also a high stagger. Push immunity, debuff immunity. And it has a weak point level 2. So basically, it's it's stronger uh, on, on weak points. So just letting you know that this is the most popular one. And probably maybe also the one you want to like run with. But again, you need to complete your second awakening quest before you're going to get it. So totally, we have these four spells, our number 9, Awakening, and number 10, Dark Rush, which is also in your rotation, so remember to use it. And again, if we're going very, very quick over the spells, we have, again, Finish a Strike, which is a high stagger damage, so basically it's going to help you with your staggering. It's a back attack spell, and it's going to make you super armor paralyzing immunity. Then we have the Shoulder Charge, which is also a back attack, and it's super armor is paralyzing immunity. Then we have Temper Slash, which again is stagger mid, Attack type, back attack. Then we have Hellblade, which is stagger, high. And attack type, back attack. And then we have Chainsword, which is a counter spell. So it's basically countering your boss. And there's also a frontal attack. Strike Wave is stagger, mid high. And we have Red Dust, which is uh, just back attack. And Sword Storm, which is mid high, stagger, and back attack. So as you can see, like almost all the spells, like almost all of them, has basically. Uh, stagger so you're gonna be you're gonna really be helping the team with staggering especially the, ta in the stagger uh, like events so so that's the spells i recommend you running on uh raids this is basically a raid build so keep in mind this is a raid build and it's made for like raiding if you wanted to go like chaos dungeon especially i would probably like uh, change out some spells like maybe getting in a whirlwind and maybe you know uh, change out your hellblade with a whirlwind instead uh, since th that one can be pretty cool for cast dungeons. But you could also run this build in cast dungeon without no problems. I would then probably, instead of with Strike Wave, instead of going with Earth Lift, I would probably recommend using Blaze Wave, Blaze Wave. Because Blaze Wave is helping you with like, um, dealing more damage. Oh, actually that's the wrong one. You want to go with, uh, Explosion. This one here. Cerberus and Blaze Wave. There you go. This one is so great like look at this and then poof explosion so if you want to go cast dungeons i highly recommend going this way instead but again for like raids which is like the most popular one garden raids and like end game bosses then this is the build like this is the build this is a build for made for raid but dungeons and like really strong single target damage probably also can use on boss fights in episode dungeons but again if you want to do cast dungeons uh you can mix around the things you can for example replace hellblades with um whirlwind and your strike wave you want to change it so you have cerberus instead and blast wave you're gonna love it you're gonna love it so that's probably what i'm going to change if i should play like a cast dungeon so let's talk about rotations like when are you, what kind of spell rotation should you use on bosses for example when you go into a stagger say, uh, like a stagger now you need to do stagger damage you're going into a stagger phase where now you really need to push out stagger damage then we have a really really cool rotation First of all, you're going to use a red dust. Basically, it's going to deal, you know, great damage. It's going to uh, deal, so it actually deals 30% more damage on the boss itself. You can see it has, like, an additional effect. Foes take 30% more damage. It's also going to give you 20% more crit. And it's also going to... Uh, well, that's the thing. It's actually going to make it's going to make so you deal more damage and you get more crit. So you always want to start with your red dust. That's like your first spell. Like that's your starter. And also you want to use bleed on it. So it's like it does bleed damage. So that's the thing. Like always start with red dust for your stagger phase. Then you want to use finish strike because it has a high stagger. So basically red dust and then finish strike. And then you want to finish uh, like use after that you want to use tempest slash because it also has uh, stagger mid so again red dust finish strike and then tempest slash of course it was if it was a boss it would like i would not be moving around it um and then you want to use sword storm as the last one because it has mid high so again we've got through the rotation first red dust finish strike tempest slash and then sword storm so we're going to do it here boom 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 and boom that is your very very quick uh you can say like a stagger we're gonna remove this one we're gonna make a monster actually we're gonna make scarecrow a boss summon there you go so let's try it again boom 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 and boom so again red dust Finish strike, timber slash, and sword storm. 
that is your stagger rotation if you need to really stagger the boss now. Then we also have the DPS rotation, which is Red Dust, Finish Strike, Sword Storm, and then you can either use Strike Wave or Hellblade. That's kind of up to you. Like, which spell do you have off cooldown right now? They both have 36 seconds of cooldown. So again, always Red Dust, always Finish Strike. And after that, then it's kind of like up to you if you want to use, well, then you have to use Sword Storm, sorry. And then it's up to you if you want to use Strike Wave or Hellblade. So again, we're going to use again Red Dust, Finish Strike, Sword Storm, and then you can either use Hellblade or Strike Wave. And it's to totally up to you. That's like, the, you can say, that's like the start of rotation. That's like your rotation you always want to restart with whenever the spells like get available. And of course, I know when you're in combat, your spells are going to come off random cooldown and it's not sure you're going to be able to do the same, but it's more like, you know, to get you like a, into a cool rotation. Also, like a basic uh, spell combo, like a basic combo here is you have this one called Chain Sword and you can like combine it together with Hellblade. So for example, because when you use Chain Sword, it's basically giving you more crit for three seconds. So you can use like uh, Chain Sword and then uh, Hellblade to get more because you got to be finishing uh, Hellblade before that three second more crit buff from Chain Sword is going off. So those two spells are like great using together like Chain Sword and then Hellblade. Two great spells also used together. So what you could do is you could actually do, use like a Red Dust, Finish Strike, Sword Storm, uh, Strike Wave, and then you can use your uh, Chain Sword and then Hellblade. Whoops. So you saw what I mean? Like first of all, Red Dust, Finish Strike, uh, Sword Storm, and then Strike Wave. Because then you use your first basic rotation, like your first rotation, and then you're gonna restart with Chain Sword and then Hellblade, because then it's gonna give the bonus from that. And then of course you have your Timber Slash, like whenever you need, whenever you need it. So we can we can try it. We're gonna remove cool. We're gonna put in uh, cooldowns again. There we go. So we're gonna try it now here. And then Tim Slash. Boom. Got your way. Boom. That was all your spells. And now it's on cooldown. Of course, now you're gonna just gonna wait for the cooldowns to get off and so on. Keep in mind, it's very important to know that the basic attack of Mayhem is actually really strong. It is legit strong. Your, your basic attack is so strong. A lot of classes, you never use the basic attack. But for Mayhem Berserkers, you want to use it. It basically deals the same damage as your spells. Like, look at this. 5k crit and 12k crit for tier 1. That is insane. Like, you can see, for example, with my some of my spells, like, for example, um, Chainsword. It basically deals 5k damage. That is the same as my basic attacks. Of course, if I use, uh, for example, spells like Red Dust, gotta deal 50k. I'm not gonna hit that, but look, look at how fast it goes. It's like 5k, 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 like 12k. So your basic attacks are really strong. So whenever your spells are off cooldown, don't worry. You have to basic attack because your basic attack as Mayhem is so strong. So don't worry, just basic attack it and it's going to be fine. So again, rotation is Red Dust, Finish Strike, uh, Sword Storm, and then Strike Wave. And then we're going to restart with Chain Sword, a Hill Blade, and then basic attacks. We're going to use it again. Oops, I failed on that one. And there we go. And then we can use Tempest Slash to end with. So again, Red Dust, Finish Strike, Sword Storm, Strike Wave, and then restart with Chain Sword, Hellblade, and Tempest Slash. And then of course you have your charge to either go like away or over to him. So that's the rotation. That's the rotation. So I really hope you enjoy this. And uh, keep in mind, you of course also have your awakening, which you can put in whenever you want. Uh, you don't have, normally you only use your awakening when you get like up to your fury mode, but because you are in fury mode all the time, you're just gonna use it. And then of course you also have your dark rush. You can basically use your dark rush whenever it's. It's a really strong spell, so you probably should use it every time it's off cooldown. So every time it's off cooldown, just put it out because it's it's really strong and it has a high stagger. So also recommended for that one. But yeah, the middle one here, Dark Rush, use it whenever it's able. But yeah, that's kind of the, the rotation. Uh, one quick 
if the boss is charging you or you really can see the boss is like going for you you have your normal uh, dodge your shoulder charge and then you also have your hellblade so you have like three spells to like get away so that's pretty efficiently like you should not be able to be catched because you can basically three different ways get away that's it so we're going to talk about runes and i don't have all the rules in the game sadly yet so i'm going to uh, borrow from maxroll.gg the rules that you actually are supposed to use and i agree with them and we should you be using these ones so keep in mind you can only be using eight runes at the same time uh, basically you have eight spells so that makes sense where you can only use eight and this is the recommended that you can be used so first of all we have on finish strike it's recommended you either use gale wind or overhelm you can also on tempest slash use focus or overhelm red dust is basically you need to put bleed on strike wave is all about gale wind hellblade you can either use gale wind or overhelm and sword storm is gale wind or overhelm Chainsaw, you can basically use four different. You can use either Purify, Gale Wind, Rage, Quick Recharge, and Shoulder Recharge. You can basically use either Quick Recharge or Protection. So this is the ones that I recommend you for using on the difference. The Strike Wave one, oh, sorry, the Red Dust one with Bleed, that's very important. Like you really, really want that. That's as a lifesaver. It deals so much damage. But this is the rules that I basically recommend, and also the ones that Max Roll is recommending for the Mayhem Berserker. So highly recommend following this for the gems which i don't have unlocked two in the game yet we're going to talk about them from max roll also which is right highly recommended to use right now but for attack gems so basically you can have two type of gems in the game uh when you open up your menu hitting seeing the background here you can go to gems but i don't have this yet in uh, yet in the game but once you go into these gems you basically have attack gems which is going to increase like your damage of the spells and you also have to cooldown gems which is going to reduce the cooldown so this is the recommended one so like tad gems you want to use for tempest slash finishing strike hellblade strike wave and sword storm and for cooldown gems you want to use on tempest slash finish strike hellblade strike wave sword storm and red dust you can only have equipped 11 uh, like gems and that's why they actually also want to recommend you having these 11s so talking about uh, cards so going into lc here I highly recommend using, um, like, we have two builds. We have a defense build and we have a damage build. If you want to be the guy who never dies and always, like, can laugh at the people in your group that dies all the time, you want to play this. You want to have the one called We'll Meet Again, and you want to have the one called Nature's Elements. Basically, We'll Meet Again is giving you, you can see here, uh, here, it's going to give you 12% less damage from foes at 50% or lower HP. See, First, when I read this, I was like, okay, so I'm going to get less damage from people who are under 50% damage. Huh, that's kind of weird. But, no. Because it's the, it's the translation Amazon did that is wrong. It's basically meaning when you are at 50% HP or lower, you are going to take 12% less damage. The same with uh, Nature's Elements. When you are at 50% HP or lower, you're going to take... 8% less damage and I've uh, someone confirmed this on, on the forums that this was basically the case of the spell and not the other way around so basically using nature's elements together with we'll meet again is giving you 20% less damage reduction that basically means I have 65 from mayhem 30% from fortitude uh, engravings and now also 20% from we'll meet again and nature's element together of course now we are over 100 percent damage reduction which means you basically got you, you cannot be killed now that's not the case it's it's doing some kind of like manipulation putting them together squishing them stuff like that uh, but you cannot open up your character here and see it because the things you're getting from cars and engravings doesn't show in here it's only showing like um the mayhem one and you're actually like items so you cannot you cannot count on this one here that's not the real result uh since these are not showing up but yeah, so this is the really, really tanky one, and it's make you so tanky. So when you're getting attacked, it's it's basically like the bosses are like tickling you. It's like tickling. They're not even dealing damage to you. So it's, I recommend this one if you don't want to die and you really want to be the guy who is going to be like alive all the time. But what about damage then? What about the, which set should you use for actually dealing most damage? Well, then I actually highly recommend you either go with Light of Salvation or the one called uh, Kassaras Legion Commanders. Basically, Light of Salvation is going to give you first three times damage reduction to dark damage. Okay, that's fine. Um, after that, on, when you get 12 Awakenings, so basically when you upgrade 12 times a, one of these cards here, like when you upgrade in total, so you get like these gems, 12 of them, 
you're going to change your damage type in to holy changes damage type to holy what happens then is the next two salvation again or the you know the way awakening you're going to get is basically going to increase your holy damage by seven percent and eight percent so because of this one here it's basically going to increase your damage your um your holy damage by seven plus eight percent because you're now dealing holy damage the same one this one does up in the top here uh it's just the other side it's going to give you holy damage reduction but it's going to give you dark damage and it's going to give you more dark damage seven and eight percent so it's basically the same the other one is just giving you light uh like holy damage and the other one is giving you dark damage so it, I guess it's it comes up to which one you're gonna get first because all these cards are legendary cards, so it's it can take a bit of time to actually collect these cards. As you can see, I'm not done yet, but that's why I'm using Wheel Meet again and Nature's Elements because it's basically giving me this damage reduction. Also, if you upgrade uh, Wheel Meet again, it's gonna give you like even more, like up to 16% less damage. And also on the last one, it's going to give you to uh, quickly restore your HP for five seconds when attacked while HP is below 20%. So when we get to below 20%, we're going to get up to 25 again. It's kind of like fun, but it has like a cooldown of 10 minutes. And nature's elements down here. Uh, well, actually, nature's elements here. You're not going to be able to collect this one here because you're not going to be able to get more than two cards. Uh, so this one you're not going to get any more. But still, this 8% you're going to get from this one is, is pretty strong. Just saying it. So in totally, the defense build and the damage build. Last thing we're going to talk about is your pet. So basically, when you go into your pet and you want to see the pets, you can basically go to you know the pet um, pet guy in every city. You have like this pet icon on the map. If you want to change your pet spells, you basically have to go to him and tell him what stat you want. It's highly recommended you're going to go with this one here called Physical Protection. It's going to give you 5% damage reduction to physical damage. And also, it's going to give you, and you also want this one here called 10% Improved Crit. So, here you get basically 5% less damage from physical damage. And here you get plus 10 crit. That's exactly the stats we need. We want to get more or less damage reduction. So, we're going to be even more godlike. And we're going to get plus 10% uh, crit because we want even more crit. So it's it's really great. And yeah, so that's kind of what you want your pet with. So again, use your pet. Uh, there's no reason to not use the bonus from your pet. I hope you enjoyed this video of the Mayhem Berserker Guide. Basically a really strong damage build, which is just all about damaging and also insane damage reduction. As you can see in the background right now, the boss is trying to kill me and the damage is just like going so slow down. Of course, you only have 25% HP, so you have to look at you have to look more on the HP more carefully since it's not this big bar anymore. It's a very small bar, but still you have all these plus damaging, plus attack speed, stuff like that. Of course, the other thing like benefit from having normal berserker technique is basically, you know, then you have also that plus 20% crit, I think it is. But this build here is just making you faster, it's making you stronger. And the damage reduction is insane. You can see this boss, he's really trying hard to get me down. But he's not going to be able to actually get me down. It, it's, it's such fun. Like, See, we can also get out of the damage reduction here. And now he's going to deal much more damage. And you can see the big bar is now moving quite faster. Because the damage, my 65% damage reduction is gone. But again, your 65% damage reduction only for Mayhem is not, not enough. That's why I, I like to like run, um, as I showed you before... I like to run Fortitudes, which is gonna make me even more stronger. I like to run with the, you know, with the card decks here, which is gonna make you even more stronger. So again, that's kind of up to you. When you do you want to be like more focusing on damaging, or do you want to be for, more focusing on actually dealing more damage? But the problem is, how I see this is basically, if if you know if you don't if you die because you're not gonna get you know if you cannot. If you die in a garden raid and use all the so like all the revives, you're not gonna help anyone. So like, do you want to be dealing most damage, or do you want to be the guy who's never gonna be dying but still at the same time gonna deal insane damage? So I I really highlight this spec here. I'm gonna show you one thing because you stayed for this long in this video. I'm gonna show you something which is probably gonna change maybe after this video, um, but I'm gonna show you something because. If you go to the, like right now, if you want these engravings, you can see I'm running right now with engravings here. I have uh, Mayhem 
or this level here, or the blue level, so it gives six points. But my fortitude, I have actually on the third level, the uh, that's the epic one, that gives nine points. This is why it's gonna help me getting up in mayhem, like up so much here, because basically my mayhem is getting up because of my jewels and because it's level two. But my fortitude is all the way up because it's on level three. And normally you would need to like get epic books for that. But if you open up the auction house right now, and if you search for fortitude, this is just between you and me. Look at this. The prices for the book right now is one gold for the one gold for the blue one, one gold for the green, two golds for the green one, and eight golds for the purple one. So if you haven't bought this upgrade yet, go do it now. Right ASAP after watching this video. You want to get it as fast as possible for the prices rises because before people find out this is actually valuable for mayhem berserkers yeah so go in now buy all this 20 of these 20 of these 20 of these so you get all the way up to nine nodes so you can do the same as me um, by having this one slotted and then you already have nine points so now you just need like the, the rest points this is such a cool little trick that i'm gonna tell you now but it's maybe gonna change when people actually find out how cheap it is and how valuable it is for example berserkers mayhem berserkers so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed my little guide and keep in mind you know i'm 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 still in the learning phase you can probably say but i i me me and uh Me, me and Cryodrakery, we pretty much agree that this spec is insane, and I think you're gonna like it. And again, this this is like a basic beginner guide for you to mayhem warriors. So I'm I'm gonna say like, this is how you play it. This is how you can be really strong in both ways and not be the guy because a lot of people when they see mayhem berserkers, they're just like, no, I don't want to play with him because he's gonna die. But with this build, I'm gonna show you, you're not gonna be die. You're gonna be laughing at them dying. So, I'm just saying it, I recommend this spec, and it's going to be good for you. So, but thanks for watching everyone, it was a pleasure making this video, and of course from here on, you can build, build it on yourself, change the spells out, play around with it, I'm just trying to give you like the fundamental of this spec. But, thanks for watching, have a great evening everyone, and I'll see you in another Lost Ark video, and remember to subscribe for more Lost Ark content. Thank you, bye.